Yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the session. Yeah, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Shall we start or uh, shall I wait for two more minutes? Uh, I think you can start by seven five, sir. Another two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Fine, 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 fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening to all. So we are going to start this session. The today's topic is dynamic memory allocation in C programming. And after completion of this dynamic memory allocation, it is a part of you know continuation of the pointers concept. After that, uh, we can create a memory dynamically. So far, uh, earlier we have created memory uh, static by using arrays and all. So after completion of this dynamic memory allocation, we will move to the files concept, like uh, how to create a files and you know store the content into that, how to retrieve it. Uh, this is the work topic. So if you see uh, under this dynamic memory allocation uh, today's you know agenda, like what are the topics we are going to cover under this dynamic memory allocation. So here we have four functions. With help of the four functions, we can do dynamic memory allocation. Number one, m alloc, memory allocation, m alloc. Second one, c alloc, followed by realloc. With help of the realloc, we are going to reassign the memory allocation. How can we do that? I'll tell you. Once after uh, creating the memory, if you want to clear the memory, you can use a function called free. So now we will see in detail 
with the help of all the three functions, how can we create memory dynamically and example syntaxes? We'll try to see one by one. Now coming to dynamic memory allocation using MLOC. So the concept of dynamic memory allocation in C language enables the C programmer to allocate memory at runtime. What does it mean? creating the memory at compile time and what is the meaning of creating memory at runtime, right? Say, for example, I'm going to take a notepad. Yeah. You have created a memory, right? So for every program in the starting itself, we are creating a memory. You want to store some 10 student numbers into the variable, right? How you are going to create student number of 10 as an array we have considered, right? That means this is the memory created, right? How much memory is created? It will take 10 cells. Each cell occupies four bytes. Since integer occupies four bytes. So four into 10 memory location. Totally 40 bytes of the memory is going to occupy, right? So this is called static memory allocation. What we call static memory allocation. That mean, and also I can say memory is allocated at the time of compile time. When the memory will be allocated by the time of compile time, memory will be allocated, right? Fine. Whereas there is a need of okay where we can go for the dynamic memory allocation that is the point here right fine assume that there will be a you know uh, product a database there is a database called product so in that you want to store different products okay uh, what is the product id and product name and you know, cost of the product, who are the manufacturer of the product, and you know, uh, many things, okay? Uh, and you know, discount of the product, and as well as you know, uh, quantity of the product, and uh, okay, if there is any product dimensions, if you have any colors of the products, if you have, what is the type of the product, what is the category of the product, many things you can have, right? Say, for example, if you take all the things, fine. Now you want to store the values into this, like product one, name of the product is something hard is, okay, something cash, so on. So let it be. Likewise, two or something pen drive, product three, laptop, something, right? So if you know this, how many products you want to store, 10 products, then you can create 10 products with memory by the time of compile time. But whereas I don't know, right? See, my software is going to run like for 10 years, 20 years, 100 years I may use my product, my software. Okay? For upcoming 100 years I may use my software. So at the time, how many product IDs, how many customers, assume that there is a customer's, customer's table where you are going to store customers details right maybe for 100 years how many customers you will get it you don't know right yeah at the time in the starting itself can i assume for 10 years maybe i may have one lakh customers can i occupy in the day one itself one lakh customer space no i can't right yeah so the disadvantage of static memory is assume that you are going to get one lakh customers down the line of one year how many customers one lakh customers okay yeah then then what i can do can i create starting itself one lakh memory size no right there is a waste of my memory yeah that is the reason when you want to create a memory whenever a customer is coming then you create a memory space then store the data <clears throat> Yeah. 
that is the actual purpose of the dynamic memory allocation right yeah now all the customer details whatever the customer details you want right customer id customer name or something okay so whatever all the customers are coming you create the memory and you store the data if any new customer coming then you create the memory and store all the data okay this is the memory for every customer likewise create another uh, memory and store all customer details likewise whenever the customer is enter entering at that time you have to create the customer data and you have to store the details in that likewise if you do you will not waste the memory and also a lot of advantages are there okay traversing like you know uh, if you want to find out a middle customer details and you want to insert it you want to delete it without disturbing the existed one lot of advantages are there if you are working with the uh, assigning memory dynamically right how can we do that with help of the concept called m alloc okay with help of the functions m alloc so not only m alloc we have uh, m alloc c alloc and re alloc fine and the next one we are creating m alloc fine but the very slight difference is there <clears throat> for the m alloc and c alloc i'll tell you once if you create a memory with the help of either m alloc or c alloc but you feel that that memory size is not sufficient after creating the after creating the memory at the time what you are going to do is instead of do you want to remove uh, again uh, entire the previous and then you want to create the new one no right if you want to add you know after constructing you have two rooms three rooms after that you want to add one more room will you go for simply adding one room or you want to go for the enter the new building right likewise you can allocate that whatever the memory space you want extra you can allocate with help of the reallocation okay let's see one by one now let us go for mlock so what is the syntax of mlock right the mlock function allocates single block of memory mlock function allocates the single block of memory okay it does not initialize the memory at execution time so it has garbage value initially it returns null if the memory is not sufficient okay so how you are going to create memory allocation and while creating the memory allocation and how much memory is going to be created and how it is going to be created as i told you this is a single block yeah i'm going to show you this example here okay with the same syntax whatever i'm shown pointer equal to type casting and what is that either a character or integer or a float whatever it may be you can do type casting followed by mlock and size of the you know whatever the memory size you want right fine say for example uh, as i told you int pointer ptr equal to so this is the type casting integer mlock of how, what is the your size is directly mlock of 20 can you okay not a big issue otherwise 5 into size of int okay so five locations you want so as we said in the memory allocation 5 into what is the size of integer size of integer is 4 bytes size of integer is 4 bytes so total size is how much it is occupied 20 bytes so total 20 bytes of the memory is occupied when you create mlock okay so <clears throat> don't get any confused i just want to tell you previously we have created memory like this int a of 5 int a of 5 an array of a of 5 now tell me what happened internally if i tell you like this in the a of 5 what happened internally okay it occupies a memory like this right so everything having some cells five cells okay total five cells here four bytes four bytes since everything is integer right every block is four bytes totally almost size 
25 into 4. So totally how much space is occupied? 20 bytes of the memory is occupied. Are you clear? 20 bytes is occupied. Fine. Now, I don't want to create like this in the starting itself, right? Yeah, I want to create using MLOC. Yeah, how I'm going to create using MLOC? That is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, using like this. So, yeah, I hope uh, the screen is visible. Yeah, once if you create like this, 5 into 4, right? How much size is created? How much size is created? Same thing, but as you said, a single block. As we discussed, a single block is created. A single block is created, 20 bytes. A single block is created, okay? So internally, 20 bytes of the memory is occupied. So that means five values you can store, 20 bytes, okay? So five values you can store, value 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever you want, you can store five values. Okay, nothing uh, different. The only thing is, instead of creating an array like the static memory allocation, this is static. Now I want to create by using MLOC, by using MLOC, okay? MLOC of, directly you can say five into size of integer, okay, like that, otherwise, I can also say like this, MLAC of 20. There is also no issue. Direct like can say MLAC of 20, that's it. Yeah, then what is the difference of CLOC? If you say CLOC, same thing, CLOC of 20, okay? If you say CLOC of 20, then what happened, you know? Like a five into size of integer, okay? Then simply like this a single blocks will be created. Every block occupies four bytes. How can I say four bytes? That's why instead of giving 20, I can say five into size of integer. Instead of 20, I can say five into, five into size of integer. Okay, that means every block size is size of integer. Okay, every block size is uh, every block is occupies integer size, right? Yeah, that is the my requirement. Okay. Yeah, that is my requirement. Fine. Now let's see how can we create a memory like this. Okay. I'm just repeating how we have created an array simply as int a of five uh, earlier in the array instead of declaring the statically. Uh, dynamically, I'm going to create like this. Okay. Yeah. So that is internally. Okay. I, you can't see, you can't express outside uh, whether how the memory is uh, allocated like this or not. Okay. So memory is allocated dynamically. Yes, fine. So let's see. We go for the example, okay? I'm going to show you example program, how we have created memory allocation, okay? Yeah, now, if you observe in this example, I'm going to create a memory by using MLR function with integers, okay? So I don't, declare the integer how many values I'm going to store, right? I won't specify anything. Simply, uh, instead of array, I'm using a pointer variable. Directly, I'm going to assign a created the memory. That memory location is going to pointed by the variable PTR. You try to understand. Here, I don't have any int AF5 like this. Simply, I just created my variable which is pointing to MLOC n into size of n. How many number of elements you want? That many number of element size is created. Okay, now that is pointed by the 
first i will explain this program after that i'll run the program right so that you will have some idea so now first let me explain about this program after that i'll run the program yeah now in this program you are entering enter number of elements yeah how many number of elements in the variable n i just entered 5 i just entered the number 5 yeah i just read into the variable n now what happened ptr equal to what happened ptr equal to ptr equal to int ml of n into size of int now tell me in the charting tell me how much size is created now 5 into size of int 5 into 4 20 right so now yes a memory is created with 20 bytes right how much 20 bytes 5 into 4 that is n into size of integer right 24 fine now now who is pointing this a where ptr so what is the address location of the ptr yeah assume that the address is 1000 so i need to work with the address not like a, not like a uh, direct values right uh, so now 1000 what is the next memory location next integer address is started with 1004 and so on right as you know this is we already discussed right 1000 1004 and so on now what is the value of ptr value of ptr is 1000 right yeah the starting address is pointed now is the ptr equal to null that means if the memory is not created properly then the ptr will be null now ptr is having something value what is the value ptr having some address of the first element right that is 1000 so this false so come out of this enter the elements of the array now i want to enter the elements what is that i equal to 0 see here i have written scanf percentage d comma ptr plus i in the last session we have discussed now generally what we should do if you are not working with the uh, direct address ampersand a of i like this we have discussed right generally we have stored like this scan of ampersand a of i a ampersand nothing but what it is an address instead of ampersand now directly what is ptr itself is a address right so that's why there is no ampersand symbol in the scan of my dear student this is very important try to understand scan of percentage d comma there is no ampersand right ptr plus i what is the ptr plus i 1000 plus 0 okay that means at the address of 1000 whatever you are enter that is stored in the address of 1000 assume i am entering 10 yeah. next yeah next sum equal to sum plus yeah how can i get this 10 value pointer when you is pointer then you will get the 10 right uh, what is that i took another variable sum yeah here i am taking another variable sum this is another example to get the number of sum of the elements of the array that is also another example now sum initiality is zero we kept like that you see sum initiality is zero now sum equal to sum plus pointer of ptr plus zero so that is 10 right pointer ptr means how much 10 so 0 plus 10 how much 10 now the value 10 is stored in the variable sum now i becomes 1 now store reading into the ptr plus 1 what is ptr plus 1 next memory location that is 1004 that what we have discussed in the last session right yeah you are entering i am using scanf that means nothing but whenever i enter the value that is stored into that particular address fine yeah how can i get this value yeah pointer ptr plus 1 so pointer ptr plus 1 means the value is 20 right yeah so the previous 10 plus 20 now in the sum what is there 
10 plus 20 is the current value. Totally 30 is there in the sum. Now next, next value. That means you are entering the next value and then you are adding that immediately to the, the sum value. So 20 plus 30 here, 30 plus 30, 60. Like this, you entered and immediately you add this. Okay, 100. Again, 50 and you add this. Okay, that is what I'm doing. So here you try to understand not logic of the array of additions of the numbers, but the understanding is here I am not storing the value into the address, not ampersand, directly with the help of the pointer I'm using, PTR. Since directly I'm dealing with the address, right? So how we can store the values with the help of the pointers is the matters. And this memory also created with the help of the MLOC, not like integer array. Earlier we did in the PTR of five, we did it. Now I'm not doing like that. With the help of the MLOC, we created. Now here you try to understand what is the substitution instead of int of five or int of 10, I'm using MLOC. You are printing, okay? So let me, uh, finally you just print this sum. This is the output. So let me run this program. Yeah, let us uh, create a file. First program I will type and the next time onwards so we can run directly. Okay. So this is the MLR function. Now let's see. So, and also my dear, all the MLR, CLR and all the functions are available in the header file called stdlib.h. So here I should have stdlib.h and all the MLR functions, CLR are available in the header file called std lib.h how we have used for strings string.h okay fine now i'm going to write this skeleton main just written zero yeah and i want to take something like you know reading n values some variables okay and also a pointer variable PTR and as we discussed some value should be initialized with zero and for for loop purpose I'm using another variable I otherwise you know you no need to declare in the starting itself as soon as you are using that variable at the time you can enter okay so sometimes I may forget that's why I entered the starting itself enter how many number of elements you want that's why this is dynamically creating right enter number of elements you want 10 elements 20 elements n number of elements okay that much of the memory is going to be created okay that value i'm going to store into the variable called n so that is my number of elements i'm reading here so now very important step is this is our actual statement how i'm going to create a memory that is a syntax see a variable pointer variable that means always uh, as we discuss the memory location, dynamic memory locations, okay, that is pointed by the variable PTR, okay, type casting, what kind of data we are going to store, you can put char also, that example I can tell you in the next example, how can you create character memory location, okay, MLOC of, uh, what is this number of elements, n, right, so how many number of elements you want, n into, n into, which which elements you are going to store integer so size of integer that means what if i say 5 5 into integer 5 integer elements you want right that's why size of int likewise you should remember that okay fine now memory creation is over now sometimes there is a mistake with this memory creation now this pointer will be assigned with null so i need to check it before doing any operations. Now, if pointer equal to null, that means memory is not created properly. Then I can say one statement, any errors can be identified, right? Yeah, unable to allocate memory. I just given some kind of statement. If the sometimes, if in case memory is not allocated due to any reason, I simply you message and I'll come out of this. In this case statements you have used, right? Case one, case two, switch cases. 
exit of zero. Okay, simply in between it will come out of the program. Yeah, yes, if memory is created properly, what shall I do? I need to enter some elements, right? So simply I can say enter elements of array. Enter elements. You need to read some values, right? Yeah, whatever the number of values you have given in the n. How can I give the n number of values? i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. You know, uh, reading n number of values. If the n value is 5, that means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that many values it will be read. Okay, so for reading purpose, I'm using scan of percentage d. Earlier, what I did, I should use the ampersand AFI something, right? Now I'm not using array. Instead of ampersand, directly, where is my memory location? PTR. So that's why I'm directly reading into PTR. Okay, why I'm using plus i? First location is zero, PTR plus zero. Next location is PTR plus one. Next location, PTR plus two, and so on, right? Yeah, that's why I place PTR plus i. So my values will be stored in that location. Immediately, you can print those values. Otherwise, I'm going to use sum. Sum equal to sum plus. Okay, sum equal to sum plus. How can I retrieve the values? Yeah. yeah. How can I retrieve the value? How can I retrieve the pointer value with the help of the pointer? Pointer PTR plus i. As we discussed in the last class, whenever you know the address, if you just use pointer with address, then you will get the actual element, actual value. Isn't it? So I just given like this. Now my sum value is calculated. Finally, what should I do? I just print the result sum value. Sum equal to percentage D comma. My result will be there in the variable sum. Yeah. And the best practice is after creating the memory, okay, you just delete that memory by using free of PTR. That is the beauty of this dynamic memory allocation. You can create memory, utilize it while leaving, you just close it, you remove it. Otherwise, in case of arrays, what will happen? Whenever you write, the memory will be created. That's it. You can say return of zero. That is ending. Yeah. Sorry, this is already written, right? Yeah, fine. Now, that's it. Okay, let me store this and um, MLog example, right? MLog underscore example two dot C. Yeah, now let me run this. Any variable declaration did we miss? N I pointer sum. Okay. Now let me run this program. Yeah, program is executed successfully. Enter number of elements. How many elements you want? Five. Enter elements of the array. Okay. So after reading, uh, since I given for loop, right? So here after for loop. Five elements it will ask. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So sum equal to 150, right? So this is like similar previous program. Don't, you know, uh, think that there is a new concept. But the only thing is the same reading the elements into the array and calculating the sum of the array elements, right? using dynamic memory allocation. Okay, the same program, how they will ask in the examination? Yeah, sum of, sum of array elements, sum of the sum of elements. Okay, sum of the elements. Otherwise, write a C program to read fine numbers and calculate the sum of the fine numbers, right? Using dynamic memory 
dynamic memory allocation. That is the program, right? Write a C program to read five numbers and add that five numbers and calculate the sum of the five, five numbers. Okay. Sum of the five numbers are sum of n numbers. Sum of n numbers. Sum of n numbers using dynamic memory allocation, right? So at the time we can use dynamic memory allocation. I hope clear this program to clear the to clear the memory dynamically. See here uh, we did not create any arrays, right? Like uh, int a of, of five, like this memory size is not fixed. If I create like this, then it is static. Okay, fine. Yeah, fine. Now let's go for next topic. That is C L O. Same, but the only the difference is C L O is also same, but the only difference is <clears throat> multiple block of memory is created. Right? That means previously, what is that example? Same entire the blocks. Like if you have five elements, five elements will be created in single block. Whereas here, five individual blocks will be created. Whereas here, five individual blocks will be created. And it initially initializes all bytes to zero. It returns null if the memory is not sufficient, right? Fine. So if you see, okay, that's why I'm checking each and every time if the pointer is uh, equal to null or not. If not null, then only I go, I move ahead to do any further program. If it is not null, then all I can do. If it is a null, I can say uh, either memory is not created or insufficient memory or whatever it may be. Fine. Now, similarly, but the only thing is here, uh, everything is same. Pointer equal to int of, instead of malloc, we are using CLR. But you can observe here, the number of elements are three, comma, size of integer. That means what? Every memory location is, okay, three memory locations. Each memory location size is integer of size, right? Four bytes. But whereas in case of MLOC, I kept three in two. What's the difference here? Previously we have, if you want to use MLOC, three into size of inter. That means three into four, 12. So 12, memory, 12 bytes at a time, single memory. Whereas here, what happened? Three comma four. That means three blocks, every block size is four bytes. Like that memory will be created, okay? Yeah, single block of the memory location. Yeah, by understanding this, by observing this diagram, you will get clear idea. Okay, previously what I did, five into size of integer, entire the block I have created, now five into size of integer, right? So five partitions will be there. Okay, so each every partition having integer size, that is four bytes, total is 20 bytes of the memory. Okay, a large 20 bytes of the memory block is dynamically allocated to pointer, fine. Yeah, same program, okay, but the syntax is changed, right? Same program, uh, syntax will change. So I already kept this program, instead of wasting the time, same program, the only thing is the syntax will change. So I can show you that program, see a lot. Okay, see if you observe, same thing, but instead of n into size of integer, I have given n comma size of integer. Memory will be created. Memory will be created individual blocks. So that's same. I just stored uh, n number of elements. I just added all the five elements. Then I just displayed and some of the n numbers. Okay. I'm going to run this program. Since program is same, I just explain like this. N number of elements you can see three number of elements enter the elements of the array we can give 10 20 30 you will get the output sum equal to 60 the only thing is we have created memory using clr that is the difference now let's move to the next topic that is realloc that is realloc yeah, simply realloc nothing but what? Once the memory is created with specific size by using either MLOC or CLR, 
you want to extend the memory you want to extend the memory so previously you have created a memory location by using mlr which is pointed by the ptr and then with that ptr you can give specify reallocate to whom you are reallocating ptr the ptr is already pointed to memory location which is created by the mlr okay with the new size yeah most of the people they are asking how to run the same program in tap tap okay let's see maybe uh, in the next session uh, i may see about the tap tap and i can show you how to run that okay so either you can run in tap tap or you know or directly you can uh, download the software and you can run this also in the systems okay whatever it may be you can follow no issue yeah and um, uh, while how i can assign reallocate the memory yes i can show you if you observe this diagram you can understand very clearly what is that so i just created a memory okay by using mlr function so how much size five elements i have created five into size of integer totally 20 bytes of the memory is created fine now which is pointed by the ptr that's why i have given ptr equal to this is the memory location this is the memory location right so yeah after that i want to add okay uh 20 more bytes i want to add i want to double the memory size previously 5 into size 20 right now i want 10 into size of integer how i can do as a syntax specifying realloc of ptr what is the ptr already this memory is pointed by this ptr right this 20 memory location comma i am going to give the new here instead of 10 into size of integer you know size of 4 uh, totally 40 right directly also you can give 40 nothing is happened right simply you can give ptr comma 40 like that means you are reassigning the new size to this pointer now this pointer is changed the memory location from 20 to 40 bytes the size of the ptr is changed from 20 bytes to 40 dynamically so i hope you understand how we can increase the size of the memory which is created by the mlr after that you can resize the memory with help of the function called realloc fine yeah so far i have given example with only integers right now let us run with the characters let us run with characters i want to show you uh, a string will be stored and as well as display the string okay i'll show you uh, example of the real art. Finally, free function we have used, right? We can remove the memory which is created. Okay, fine. So now let me run this program reallocation function with the help of the uh, some functions, right? Let's see. I'll run the program so that you will get better understanding. To understand better, and I'll create the program. Yeah, what I'm going to do now, I'll just create a skeleton like what are the header files you have to use? stdio.h and stdlib.h. Then Yeah, and then I want to take character this time. Okay, I'll take one string simply. I'll give you a small example for better understanding of this concept. Now I want to create the memory, right? So see the syntax here, str equal to simply I can say written type is char. Written type is char mlock. Okay, you can say char into size of char. What is the size of char? One, right? One byte. So directly, I can also say the memory size, whatever you want. See, this syntax is very easy for you. Okay, directly I can say 
care of ml log of here care into size of okay size of care that is one byte right otherwise directly how many number of bytes you want since it is a characters right so directly you can give 15 or 20 whatever you want now i want to now a string i didn't declare now my dear you should understand here why i written like this this is equivalent to like you know without using dynamic memory allocation what i should do str of 15 see this is equivalent to like this we have created a string with 15 characters instead of doing like this i have created using mlog that's it that is the difference nothing difference okay yeah try to understand about the working with mlog now next what happened yeah i want to store some string right i can simply use already you know string functions str cpy so i can add uh, another function like string dot h also str cpy of that variable str and i can say one string i will add black buck i just stored a string okay and i want to print it simply i'll print it printed that means what happened I just created a memory and I stored a string and I'm just printing given string equal to percentage yes. So my dear do you want to see once after creating the memory you want to see the address of the memory yes you can see address of the memory also you can see address equal to what is that uh, you know format specification you have to use percentage u or percentage x right unsigned percentage u comma yeah what is the string str you where your address is there str right your address is stored into once if you write like this means what that memory address is stored into the str right yeah i'm dealing with the address and from this variable you can print the by using percentage yes you can print the string also okay you can also see uh, how you are going to yeah so this portion we call it as this portion is initially i created a memory size 15 i stored black book and after that i just displayed right after that i want to reallocation what i want to do reallocation of memory how i can do by using real log how i can do real log str equal to car real log of this time i can say 25 this time i can say 25 previously ml of memory 15 characters now i just added with 25 character space okay 25 character space that's why i have converted you know type casting with cat now my string length is now it becomes 25 now shall i add some more string yes with the previous string now you tell me with the previous string i want to add dot com blackbug.com blackbug.in something already string is there in str so how can i add the new thing already str consists of blackbug i want dot com how can i do which function I have to use? String concatenation. str cat. str cat. String concatenation. We did in the strings functions. str comma. What is there? Black buck is there. And I want to add something like dot com or anything. Now, semicolon. Right? Now, do you want to print that final string? Yes, you can print. Print f. String equal to percentage yes, comma str. That's it. So after creating this reallocation, how can I understand whether the memory is recreated with the same location or is it taken new memory location? 
how can we understand that is also very important right as i said in continuation with the 15 it is added 10 more that means what it should be having same memory address location right the starting address should be same let us check what is there by printing that address also yeah what i'm going to do now i want to print address equal to let's see whether the address is going to be same or different okay yeah comma str Yeah. Next, I'm going to. That is completed. Finally, I will remove my memory location, which is pointed by the str. That's it. That is my program. Uh, let me save. What is this program? Uh, reallocation, right? I'll save as a reallocation. Reallock underscore example two dot c. Yeah. Now I'm going to run this. Yes. See, real of saying that, okay, to whom I should add to the existing str, to whom I to add, okay. That's why it is showing error. Already str is there. To the str, I should add the twenty-five. That is the error. Okay. So let me run this. Yes, this executed successfully. What you can observe, the previous string equal to black bar. The address is one one eight six seven one eight four. Again, after assigning the new memory, backbook dot com. See, you can understand the same memory location. That means what? My memory location is extended by adding ten more characters, and I added the what are the string size? That's it. Okay, fine, clear. Now, uh, that's it. Uh, this is the uh, M lock, C lock, and R lock. Free, anyhow, we have used just for removing the memory locations. We are using the free. Free also earlier in the last session, I have given one more example also, right? So this is about dynamic memory allocation. Fine. Now. Let us start with a new topic called files. Okay, a new topic that is working with files. Yeah, working with files. Now let's see. So first, I need to ask something, some questions. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, my dear students, what is the purpose of using the files, right? What is the purpose of using the files concept? Okay. So earlier, what I did simply scan up. You want to read two numbers: percentage D, percentage D, comma percent A, comma percent B. Something you have given two numbers. After that, you got something A plus B, and result you printed print of okay something addition is percentage D comma result you have printed like this fine that's good. Now something what are the program you have written you just displayed. Now after executing this program, assume that you have given A value. A value is ten, and B value twenty. Are you clear? B value twenty. After that, the result is you got thirty. You just display thirty. Again, I run one more time. Again, I run one more time. I want to give previous whatever I given. So can I see where I given? Now I'll repeat. I think whether you understand or not. i will repeat this so what i do 
first you should understand the purpose of the files right first you should understand the purpose of the files assume that hash include stdio.h into main that's it right i'm giving two input values printf and the two numbers right just given enter two numbers okay it just give in the a comma b i won't uh, even calculate also just uh, i'll display that's it okay scan of percentage d percentage d comma percent a comma percent b okay i'll just uh, display print of given numbers percentage 5d percentage 5d comma a comma b just assume like this save just to testing i can say testing dot c i'm going to run this program enter two numbers i'll give 1020 given numbers 1020 right fine now enter over right my program is over now again i'm running this yeah i forget whatever i given the previously can you retrieve it that is my question that is my question can you retrieve it i don't know what are the numbers i given earlier i want to see those numbers where it is storing those numbers where it is storing that numbers i can't i don't know since you are not storing those numbers once you assign the values okay once you are reading through the scanf function where the memory is created as soon as you okay as soon as you have run this program your memory location is cleared you cannot see those content in the permanent memory location okay that's why i don't know my a value and b value can i retrieve now a and b value no right that's why so that is the why with help of the scanf we are reading the values which is not stored permanently right so that's why i can call it as those inputs so we are using reading and printing right those input output statements we call it as console okay console input output statements what we call console input output statements what are the console input statements yeah console console devices are what keyboard mouse keyboard mouse are the console input output devices that's why i can call it as console input functions are input statement console input statements are input functions what are the input statements yeah whatever you are using single character you want to read get char you want to read a string get s yes. you want to read anything like with any characters or any numbers formatted then scanf right yeah this we call it as console input statements again under this i can call these two are console unformatted console unformatted input statement see this is more people will not able to understand this one you should understand this point so get char and get s yes, uh, it is not formatted like you want only particular you know location with the particular sizes you know with spaces uh, the value should be displayed in this particular location like you know after five spaces you want to display you want to display you know by default 5.000 will be displayed no instead of that i want only 5.00 only you can format it by writing uh, you know uh, value comma 6 comma 2 like that with percentage f percentage d percentage L. like these are all format specifications right so where you can do where you can do format specifications 
percentage D, okay, or percentage F, percentage C. These are all percentage D, percentage C, percentage F. These are all format specifications, right? So that's why this we call it as console formatted input function. This is very, very important. Try to understand. What is the console formatted input? Why I'm saying console? Those data will be reading through the keyboard. The data reading through the keyboard. So the help of the scanner, I can read the data through the keyboard, right? Yeah. So whereas here, I can read through the keyboard, but I can't format. Simply no format specification. Get current, get yes. Similarly, similarly, what does the console uh, unformatted input statements? Similarly, console unformatted output statements. Put care is the output, right? Output function. Similarly, console unformatted output statement. Put yes. Okay, these are the things. Whereas here we have printf, that is console formatted. Output. So simply I can say IVO. Okay. Input, comma, output. Console unformatted input output statements. Console formatted input output. Okay. Yeah. You try to understand this is very, very, very important point, my dears. I'm going to tell you now one more thing. Yeah. Then if you understand this clearly, 50% uh, of the files you can understand. Yeah. Now, yeah, assume this is the temporary memory location. What is this? A temporary memory location. All the values where it is storing into the temporary memory locations. Okay. So like I just given my input values. Okay. With the help of, with the help of keyboard. Assume this is the a keyboard. Okay. This is the keyboard. So with the help of keyboard, I am going to store some value. How I'm going to read the values from the keyboard by using scanf. By using scanf. Assume like this. Okay. Not assume this is the fact by using scanf or you can use get care like whatever i said you can use get care get yes or scanf any input all three anything you can read okay either scanf or get care get care or get yes whatever you are using but with all the things what you are doing i just reading through the keyboard okay and i'm storing the values in the temporary memory location this is what temporary memory location okay temporary memory location assume i have i'm having something variables 10 and 20 the data is stored in this temporary memory location okay oh, what is your output device so this is the input device right this is your input i can say i slash p input what is my output my output device is some monitor say this is like a monitor right so how i'm going to display see my down arrows this is my down arrow this is up arrow i through the keyboard given input how with help of get s get gas scan up if you understand this diagram clearly you can clear about the total topic. Okay. Yeah, temporary memory location. So temporary nothing but buffer. Yeah, now this is your output. This is your output device. Okay. So how you're going to display this 10 and 20 with help of the function. Okay, here with help of the functions like uh, printf, printf, all like printf okay slash put yes and all okay put care put yes and all right 
Yeah. So with help of all these functions, I'm going to print in. So this is the flow, right? Simply through the keyboard given into the temporary memory location. Here I got the output into the monitor. This is the monitor. Okay, fine. Till now we did like this. Since because of the temporary memory location, the data is not displaying. I can't store. So now, so this we call it as console memory location. Okay. Now from this input, from the keyboard, from the temporary memory location, I want to store this data into some other memory location that is called a file memory location. What is this? Files. The files, nothing but a permanent memory location. What is this? A file. Like you are creating a file, notepad files, A, B, C, D, some files, word files, notepad files, whatever you type some data, the data should be there in the permanent location, right? Assume that there is a name called file.txt. You can think like file.txt txt this is a file fine now how we can store the data into the file i can't directly from the input from this input to, to directly can i put into the file there is no way i'm not doing like this try to understand i'm not putting directly data from the keyboard to the file where i'm going to keep through the input to temporary location with help of the get care get yes and scan of from this temporary memory location, okay. Again, here we have a function called f put c, f put c, f put car. Sorry, f put s, f put s. Unformatted. Again, if there is a formatted one, is we have f print f. What is that? F print up. Simply you just add F. With this, see here in, here we are using get, here we are using put. Nothing but you should understand. I am writing the data to the file. What I am doing? I just put into the data into the file. So that's why that is the input. So whatever the 10 and 20 we have with help of either F put S, F put C or F print up, you can write those data to the into the file. So we can call it as this operation, we call it as write operation, write those data to the file. Now in the file, what is the data you have? Either numbers, characters, strings, content, text, whatever it may be you have. Okay. And then, and then now here you have did this file operation. Now you want to read those data from the file and display to the monitor. Can I directly display to the monitor? No, directly I can't. Directly I can't read the data from the file and display to the monitor. Then what I can do? You can read from the file to again temporary memory location. From the temporary memory location with help of the printf or put yes or put care you can do. Or the third one is put care. Okay, you can do that. Now here, what is the function second we have? Same thing like f get c, f get c, okay, f get c or f scan of f put c like that. Okay, put s, yes. f get s. Same thing you can have f get s or f scan of, right? Yeah, these are all you can use, F scan of. Fine, you try to understand about this. Now, now tell me the flow, okay? So you want to store the data, what are the operations you have to do? So first, the, with this is the reading through the keyboard with the help of the get care, get a scan of, right? So this is the number one, first operation. What is the second operation? From this, you should write the data to the file. That file should be writing mode. So that is the second step what is the third step from the file okay you should open in the read mode then only you can read this file should be in read mode okay then you can read the data from the file and put into temporary location so that is the third step and what is the fourth step 
from the temporary you can print to the monitor directly you will get the data into the monitor directly you can use either one and two steps for only writing the data on directly third and fourth separately or all four steps in one program or one two steps in one program and third and fourth is another program i can show you both ways okay this is the way we are going to work with the files okay so i hope you understand this file concept how i am going to work with the files okay so if you understand this same concept now the programs are very easy okay better you can take you know screenshot or something yeah now yeah let me run this yeah what are the functions we have f put c what are the things we are going to do in the files f put c f get c okay writing the characters by characters into the file and reading character by character c nothing but characters and whereas f put s strings string by string how can we do that and f printf and f scanf that is any specific format okay and the last one is f seek f tell and rewind these are the functions and uh, with the specific positions we can work on this now see out of all the topics see these are all the topics out of all the topics i'm going to whatever it is highlighted that is the first topic we are discussing now what is the syntax if you want to work with f get c and f put c you should know the syntaxes right yeah so before doing any operation on the file okay the file syntax is you should open a file you want to put something data to the file you should open the file how you can open with help of the function call f open okay so what is the data type is it a file is either integer type or character type or string type no a file is of type a file so we have a data type called like file okay yeah so file type pointer file open is the f open is the function you can say any name of the file comma mode what is the mode either you want to write the data to the file you should open with the write w mode if you want to read the data read mode if you want to append like uh, already data is there you want to add the new things then you can say a mode and also some more modes are there so this is the since in the starting stage i can deal with these three modes if the file is not created even though you open it is not open properly this is due to the path or something issue then it returns null how i uh, show you earlier in the mlock if not created memory or insufficient memory it shows null similarly f open returns null if it is unable to open a file if the file does not exist f open will create a file if the mode is w or a okay fine that means while you are opening that means there is no function for creation simply f open nothing but what simply it will check if it is there or not if it is there okay no issue it will open if it is not available that means the file is not available it will create and then it will be opened so two operations will do by using f open two operations will do okay where these functions are available by default we are using stdio.h right so uh, these all functions of the files are available in the header file call f uh, stdio.h now same thing what is the purpose of f get c okay c as you understand uh, reading character by character from the file i am using get get means you are getting the data single character by character so to read a single character by character i am using f get c to print character by character i am using f put c that means this is a syntax whatever the character we have in the c that will be stored into the fp whatever the character is there from the fp that you should assign into some variable so how to close a file simply f close of file pointer fp simply you can close it okay so this is the program example program you should understand okay with one example at least uh, we can close this session today okay with one or two examples so that you can practice files also so now let's see how i can create the file something in the d folder or something 
okay with writing mode f open yeah let me run this so that you can uh, i'll explain while writing the program yeah i will open this editor i'll create a new file and i'll check here my drive uh, e drive having anything no only mp2 is there that also i'll remove so that no file is available right yes let me create a file using my program okay so all my functions are there in the header file call stdio dot h main yeah now i how i can create a file the data type is file should be in capital letter right file is of type file type my variable is fp so what is the meaning here fp is a variable which is pointer type variable of type file that means once if you create any file my file pointer is pointed so i can use it is my reference variable for the files okay so if i want to close a file simply i can use fp if i want to create a file fp okay so fp equal to how i can create fp equal to file pointer fp equal to how i can create a file f open is the my function where is that where you want to store in the e colon in the e drive i want to create a file my file name is file1.txt what is that arguments that should be in the write mode either write mode or read mode first while creating the data i should store right i should write data to the file so that's why i'm using w if you want to read the data from the file i can say read mode okay so somehow you know i want to read a character by character right that's why i will create a variable char ch and then i can use uh, reading character by character right so how i can read the data you know get char function get char ch equal to get char what is the purpose of ch i want to read a single character from the keyboard okay so did i say the same function yeah what is the my uh, flow i told you yeah i'll put here i'll keep here so what is the flow yes first one is input through the get char i want to read the data now where it is there in the ch that means in the temporary memory location from the ch how i can put the data into the file by using f put c or f put s or f print f right so here i'm going to use f put c okay f put c my syntax is saying that where your data is there in the variable ch comma where you want to store into the variable into the file so the ch whatever the data you are reading into the character variable that that is there here right from this i want to store it into the file how i can write to the file my file pointer is fp right so if i read one single character a that is stored into the fp right likewise so the using get char using get char how many characters you can read at a time single character so single character will be stored you want multiple then what you can do same thing reading multiple characters i can use looping right so what i can do the same two lines i can put into do while okay either while you put it maybe you can you do right so the same thing reading character by character i want to put into the loop okay so until what is the condition here while in this you know files we have a concept called in that whatever the character you are reading till end of the file okay end of the file indicates control z so till end of the file you can read the data so this you should understand so i am reading character a b c d welcome to so on so i'll write so whenever i say control z my ch is indicates end of the file right until that i can read a number of characters character by characters okay fine now that's it i just reading continuously character by characters okay fine
and then finally uh, what i can do i should close i should close what is the function f close of f file pointer will be closed fine this is for closing a file so now that's fine but i don't know if the file pointer is properly pointed to the file or not if anything is wrong what i can do i should stop my program right so for checking purpose i can say if fp equal to null if fp equal to null simply i can say printf file does not exist i can say like that right so that i can stop my program okay i can simply return or you can exit no issue fine okay so this is my program see what happened here simply i just created a file i just created a file no file is there now it will be created in the e folder and it will be open with write mode now fp is pointed to something assume that it is executed properly now then automatically it will read something character by character that will be writing to the with help of the f puts it will be write to the file and like this read through the keyboard and uh, uh, write to the file read through keyboard write to the file like this okay now let's see is it will be displayed on the monitor no i didn't write that program this program only reading through the keyboard and storing into the file so what are the operations reading through the keyboard and storing to the file these two operations i did it okay these two step 1 step 2 i did it so let's see what happened after running step 1 step 2 let me save this program okay uh file example 1.c okay so let me run this program yeah In the while loop we should give the semicolon right hmm here also see anywhere any semicolon missing or uh, any variables are missing yeah it's good yes my program executed successfully so it is waiting for what purpose it is ready to read something like welcome to entered okay black buck anything you can write right and then in the ending i can say control z control z then it stops control z indicates end of the file okay yes fine that's it so i given the input now where this data is stored where the data is stored what is the location in the e drive in the e folder oh, sorry in the e drive file1.txt let us check it let me check this in the e drive see is there any file is created see file1 file1 is created right just now we have created file1 open this yes what is there welcome to black box this is the content is there right that means what through program i created a file i kept the data into the file so is the data is permanent location or not yes obviously the data is there in the permanent location okay the file one is created so let's see file 2 is not there right so i can create the same program with file 2 i can run the same program one more time i can say simply here file 2 okay i'll run one more time okay okay so i can say welcome to c programming session line 3 and uh, anything right line 4 like this okay i'm going to end with control z i just entered a control z yeah then it stops right then now see whether it is created or not see file 2 is created right file two. open it see welcome to c program session line 3 line 4 like this okay so this is undefined character 
Yeah. So likewise, the data, the text will be permanently stored, right? So that is called files. That is the purpose of the creating the files. Now, how can I read the data from the file display to the monitor? I didn't display here, right? I didn't display onto the monitor. Yeah. So if you want to display, so uh, today we have discussed with, you know, displaying to the only apply two operations. So reading through the keyboard and writing to the file. In the file I just opened, I've shown. Now from the file, how I can retrieve and how I can display to the monitor. What are the functions I should use? Yeah, again, I should use F get C or F get S, F scan F. I'll use all. So now while I'm using F put C, right? Similarly, I can use F get C. Then with the help of the F get C and with the help of the printf, I can display the monitor, right? Yeah. So that is the operation. So that is the next concept, next example. Reading the data from the file using F get C. Reading the data from the file using F get C. Yeah, so uh, this is the program we need reading the data from the file and you can display to the monitor. What are the steps here? I just open, I just open, yeah, here we should open in the read board, not a uh, uh, write mode. Yeah, I'll do correction here. You should read with the data from the read mode and then using f get c what happened here using f get c okay if it is uh, not null then i'll go here f get c of fp that means what happened character by character will be stored in the ch you print character and is this not end of the file then read another character print the character you know printing characters percentage c comma ch so reading character by character from the file and display to the Monitor. Monitor means what happened? Printf. Printf is used to print from the temporary memory location to monitor. F get C for what purpose? Reading character from the file and stored into the temporary location that is in CH. From the CH, we are using printing with the printf. So this program will read whatever the data just now we have stored the into the file. Those data I can display to the monitor. Okay. So let us run uh, this program in the next session. Uh, so after this, same thing we can do with F get S, F put S, F print F, F scan F, F C capital and all. How can we work with that? We'll see in the next uh, session. Maybe tomorrow session, we can complete all the topics of uh, with examples, F get S, F put S like this. And also how can we transfer from the data of one file to another file? How can we count uh, how many number of characters, how many number of words, how many number of lines the data is available in the file. Uh, like these various kinds of operations, we can work on the files. Okay. So files is also one of the very, very important topic. As per your syllabus, files will be there in the, as per VTEC, uh, that is last unit, you will have the files. Okay. Fine. So thank you very much. Uh, till then, happy learning. Uh, the next session we will cover the remaining topics thank you sir. thank you sir yeah thank you ma'am